if you are in the diaspora or you're about to go to the diaspora and you're coming from Africa and you already know how to make money, this conversation is going to be absolutely useless for you. I am going to maintain the linguistic in English in case it ends up being listened to by somebody who's not just from Zimbabwe, but from across the continent of Africa. Here is the fundamental difference between the diaspora from Africa and the diaspora from other parts of the world. When you are coming from Africa, you are running away from poverty. And in most instances, you land in a country where the community is not ready for you. And not only are they not ready for you, they don't have an onboarding process or a welcome process that puts you and integrates you into the functions of the economy that you are now surviving in. So what tends to happen is it's one man for himself, God for us all. You make a lot of mistakes. In fact, it becomes disadvantageous to always be around the community of your own people because they want to bring you down more than anybody else. It is the person from your own country who wants to see you down. So where does an African go to understand the secrets to become successful and make money in the diaspora? Is it our fate then that when we get to the diaspora, we are supposed to always be laboring shift from shift from shift tirelessly in a loop that is a never-ending cycle to keep us busy and working in a red race. Because what tends to happen is at some point you find that person who went into the diaspora 10 years ago, 10 years later, is dying begging for a chance to go back home and reinvest. But even then there is no formula, no format. So it ends up limbo, frustration, losing money because nobody ever created the blueprint and the trouble is the ones who did make it do not concise their strategies or their blueprints cohesively enough for us to be able to follow a path which gives us a pathway to prosperity this is what other nations have been able to do well the lebanese have done it very well the indian community has done it very well in africa seldom do you find it but every now and then you find some nigerian communities have done it well you find that some Somalian communities have done it very well. Community has worked in some instances. But what is it that differentiates mavericks like Strive Masiwa, mavericks like Mo Ibrahim, mavericks like Teresa Tent? What is it that separates them for them to become global territory names and yet some people are in misery. They just graduate from an African misery to a European misery. If you already make money and you know how to do it, this would be useless for you. But if you do not know how to do it, I have spent the last 10 years of my life speaking to the brightest and best minds from Africa who have made it in the diaspora to come up with a concise strategy plan step by step that i'm going to walk you through and i don't want to waste time so let me go into the first one the first thing you must do is you must understand you will be judged by one thing and one thing alone when you go to the diaspora were you able to unlock prosperity for yourself prosperity for those you left behind and prosperity for those who are coming after you this is the 31 strategies of how you unlock making money in a foreign land. Hello, and welcome to another inspiring episode. We are delving deep into the world of opportunity, especially tailored for Africans looking to make their way to financial mastery on foreign soil. Why is this important? Because it's time to challenge the norm and awaken the sleeping giant of African brilliance. The diaspora is bustling with African trailblazers like Strive Masiwa, like James Manika over at Google, Kreven Mube in South Africa, Adam Tambara at MIT University, who have defied expectations and set benchmarks, which we're going to dig into. The first strategy is you must master the art of observation. You need to be able to observe, just like Strive Masiwa, Zimbabwe's billionaire entrepreneur, he didn't just arrive, you observe the telecommunications landscape, 
like a keen detective, know who matters, know the hot spots of opportunity and the tools that give you an edge. You have to be a detective who understand the environment you're operating in. Knowledge of where you are is the first and most important thing. Is the first and most important art is to have the art of observation. Strategy number two, you have to understand that the loyalty you get from a, anybody who is willing to give you money is the most important thing you must protect. You must protect anything that puts money in your hands. You must protect it. I'll give you an example. At 16, my first ever job in the United Kingdom is I worked as a uh, tr um, taxi driver for a Pakistani businessman. He didn't pay me much, but I was at school, so I'd drive his taxis to my school. I'd pick up all the students who wanted to go in club and drink. And I was the guy who took them in, designated driver who took them home. And I, they became loyal to me. They were loyal to me, but I was loyal to the money they were giving me, so I took care of it. It is very important for you to understand strategy number three. It is the strategy of the rule of who else. When you look at your address book, you must build a black book of contacts that are going to get you started in your networking, but contexts that are going to grow you. One of the things Trevor Nube taught me when I was in South Africa is every time you meet somebody, always ask them who else they might know that they can introduce you to who is in your line of interest. It is always important to extend and open another door. Never, ever leave a door closed for opportunity. The opportunity might not be on that day. Never leave the door closed. Understand the rule of who else's strategy number three, to always be able to connect. There's something called the six degrees of separation between you and the ultimate person who's going to change your life is about six degrees of separation. In fact, let me tell you this. You find that in life, the person who ultimately gives you your biggest break, take a look at the opportunities you have now, including the people who, are, who have uh, managed for you to even get to the diaspora. It's never the person you would have expected to get you there. It's always the person you didn't even have on your list to start with. When you get to the diaspora, strategy number four is critical importance is of opium quintessential relevance. The punctuality premium. Strategy number four, Atom Tambara taught me a very important lesson. He's an esteemed caller, renowned for his punctuality. Be the person everybody can set their watch to. Set the standard on time. Fail at everything else, but there are things that are so basic you cannot fail it. Do not fail showing up on time. When you show up on time, you start getting respected. This is the thing that will cost you no money. Just order an organization. Show up on time. Strategy number five. Trump, he taught me a very important lesson. He used to be the Liverpool a goalkeeper in the United Kingdom. And when I met him in the UK, he taught me a very important lesson about going the extra mile. He said he used to sit on the bench a lot and you'd never get a chance to play. But every time he got a second to get onto the football pitch, he always went the extra mile. Listen to me, Africans, you have to go the extra mile every single time because in the end, person who gives it the most is the person who is ultimately going to get the most. Let me give you a par uh, pragmatic example. If there is a waitress when you walk into the restaurant and the waitress comes to you and there's one waitress who is smiling and joyous and bountifully brilliant with you and then there's another waitress who is not giving it their all, they're doing the basic job of waitering to you. Which waitress is likely to go away with the tip? It is the one who does the biggest smile, who gives the most compliments. Give compliments, go the extra mile. At everything you are doing, always go one extra mile. Always make the other side feel good. Let me give you an example. If you're a waitress, for those of you who are going to be working as waitresses and starting off on those jobs, when you serve a client, always comment on their perfume, always comment on their height, comment on their dressing. You know what that does? It simply makes them tip you because people like people who speak well about them. Strategy number five, strategy number six, sorry. Passion over paycheck. Tandy Newton, parents of Zimbabwe, she's a big British actor, the renowned actress. Tandy Newton once said to me at a function I attended, love what you do and the money will follow. And she gave me an example. You know, when Elon Musk, the richest man in the world, when he wakes up in the morning, he doesn't think I want to be the richest man in the world. When Cristiano Ronaldo wakes up in the morning, he doesn't say, I want to be the richest footballer in the world. You know what they say instead? They say, I want to be the best at what I do in the world. 
When you are the best, the money will follow. The trick and the secret is to be the best at what you do. Strategy number seven, strive for excellence, not affluence. Excellence. You must be synonymous with doing things better than anybody else does them. This is not the same. This is not the same as what I was referring to before. This is referring to what do you put into what you do? Do you wake up earlier than everybody else? Do you practice harder than everybody else? Do you read and study harder than everybody else? You have to do more than others. Strategy number eight, blue ocean thinking. When I met James Manike, who's, who has excelled at Google now, he's now the top black guy at Google. He continues to think how some of the conventional boxes. One of the things I've learned and mastered from him is blue ocean thinking. When you are in a situation, do not think about the situation as it is. Think about the situation as what you can bring value to the table. Strategy number nine, the hunter's instincts. Don't miss your thought. It's going to take a while for the shot to come. But when that shot comes, when that opportunity comes for you to meet somebody you wanted to meet, to get to a place you wanted to get to, recognize the precise moment to seize an opportunity. Do not miss. You have to wake up and think, I've got a weapon, a gun in my hand. Cock. I am absolutely aiming. You give me a shot, I'm not going to need a second one. Strategy number 10, speak when spoken to. I learned from Tsitsima Siwa, who I spent some time on a long flight with when I was traveling back to Africa. And she told me that when the room turns its attention to you, captivate them with your narrative. When they're not listening, do not speak. You do the listening. When you get a chance to speak, captivate with your narrative. Move with a ready-to-go story, a story that you're ready to go, a story that when people say, tell us about you, everybody's captivated and they give their attention to you. Strategy number 11, make lasting first impression. There are five things that determine your first impression. The first thing is, how do you smell? How do you, second, how you look? How do you, how do you, when they say a human brain has got five senses, those five senses are what you people use to judge you at first impression, control them, own them, master them. Master the art and craft of when you walk into a room, baby, may everybody never forget the day they met you and your fine self. Master the five senses. You know them, right? Master them. Strategy number 12, understand the power matrix. In every room you go into, there is less than three people who actually call the shots. It doesn't matter if you're at a church. It doesn't matter if you are at a business meeting. If you are if you are working in a big organization, political organization, there is less than three people in any organization actually call the shots. Think about it. Think about everywhere you've been, school even. Master the art of knowing who those three people are so you don't spend your time talking to people who don't matter. Once you've mastered who those three people are, those are the people you need to make sure you're speaking to. Be surrounding yourself with decision makers, not opinion makers. Strategy number 13, detox your network. I hate to say this, but stay away from people who are from where you are from. They know the things you know. They know the people you know. Stay away from them. If somebody doesn't add value to your life, it's time that you reconsider their role in your life. You have got to be ruthless with who is around you because they will determine the speed and pace at which you go. Strategy number 14, the daily rituals for success. Petra Nemakova said to me once that she, when you begin your day with meditation, you establish daily rituals that anchor you. I know it sounds willow to people who've never meditated before, but understand this. You're now in an environment where if you don't center your mind at all times, you will be taken by the wind and you will not be able to pull yourself out or to pull yourself back. Group intelligence. Always be able to read a room. When you enter a room, read it. Don't be quick to open your mouth. Don't be quick to act. Always read a room. Be strategic in how you move. Be strategic in how you speak. I want to explain something to you. The strategies that made the secret to making money in the diaspora is being liked by people with money. Are you hearing me? The secret to making money in the diaspora is by being liked by people with money, it is not anything else except that when people with money like you, they will open the door for you. They will make time for you. Utilize all your facility factually to draw and attract people who are going to make money. So if you are going to reimagine yourself, here is the reimagination of yourself you must have. Imagine a you 
that looks good, that talks good, that walks good, that smells good. And you walk into a room and people with money say hi. When they say hi, you know the story you are about to give right back at them. Because if you master that story, that's the hook, jab, heal. You have their attention. Once you have their attention, do not lose it. It doesn't take two, three, five people for you to blow up. It really ever only takes one. I hope this encourages you. For those who are part of my classes, you know now that we have coached over 20 now bona fide millionaires in the UK, over 15 bona fide millionaires now in South Africa, over six, about six millionaires now in the United States. And we've only been doing this for the last six months. I guarantee you, everything you need, you already have it. God already gave you. Know who your spirits are. Know when you walk into the darkness. Know that you say, God, give me light, but also speak to the people of your blood, your tribes, man, your spiritual ancestors, so that they pave a way in the open for you. You are not cursed. You are just lacking strategy. And I hope I can give you some of that. So there you have it. 15, the 31 strategic tools you need to excel in a foreign land. The insights will not only help you navigate unfamiliar territories, but also put you on the radar of people who matter. Until next time, head back.